What's up, nerds? Welcome to Arsenal X, NGR's Xbox show. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Deering, and alongside me, as always, that retro code, that chocolatey goodness, Edward uh, Edward Barnell. Wow. I am excited uh, to have our special guest on and to be doing Arsenal X. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Love need, doing Arsenal X. We need to come up with a nickname. Joining us, special guest, nickname pending. Jesse Douglas. <laughs> Jesse, hey guys, how's it going? How's it going? Oh, Pretty yes. good. Yes. Up in my uh, podcast, Cherry. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I remember when I did that on Life of Gaming episode three. Please don't go listen. Support their show, but don't go listen to that episode. It was bad. You're on high 80s. I know. <laughs> I know. Now we got uh, the but shot cast. Not- is, that, is that what Josh is doing now? The shot cast and then the Xbox yes. dive. With Jamie uh, and yeah, Chris, so, so yeah, we're in sh- we're in competition with the Xbox Dive guy. Shout out to Chris and Jamie. I know we need to get them on the show too at some point. Ah, oh, man, Xbox guys, woo! After that half hour conversation on Ninja Turtles, it's time to transition to. Uh, maybe we should just put that up as like a bonus episode. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that was go. that was a. I mean, I got it all. I just because I was playing on starting right after we ended the World One One recording, and then we just kind of, you know, got off the rails. But, anyways, <laughs> Jesse, welcome to the show, community hey! community extraordinaire. This is what I'm going to call Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Oh, this guy keeps <laughs> up on the community stuff when I can't and Ed can't. So, yeah, how's it going? What do you what do you, What's everyone been playing? I guess we could start with, maybe. Uh, uh, Xbox for me. Uh, um, I'm going to be starting Titanfall 2 horror mode. Uh, hopefully, me and Jesse could join up in that. Um, been playing. Uh, started up Gears of War 4, trying to do hardcore. I'm gonna see if I could go through that game. Um, I don't know if I give a, a achievement or anything for it, but I kind of want to test myself on it. Um, Uncharted 4 for PS in. And uh, for uh, going to be jumping back into Tokyo Mirage session for Wii U and Paper Mario Color Splash, um, and Dragon Quest Eight for 3DS. And then I'm going to be starting Fire Emblem when I can, um, and then Zelda Blade Chronicles X. Um, nice. And then I'll be I'll be returning to Dead Rising Four, and uh, some other Xbox games that I need to finish. I need to finish up Forza uh, Horizon. I need to finish that up. Yeah. Uh, did you see that in Forza Horizon you can drive the car from Final Fantasy 15 now? Yes, I've seen that. That's uh, interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I'll leave it at that. It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and I forget, uh, did you play Dead Rising 3? I have it. Uh, I played a little bit, no. but I haven't finished it yet. Oh, okay. Um, did you but... play 2 at all? Uh, two I have for my PS3. I played a little bit of that too. Oh, just one I didn't is the only one I didn't play. No, okay, so <laughs> another story time. I own Dead Rising on Wii. I own Dead Rising Two on PS3. Dead Rising Three and Four I own on Xbox One because they're only on Xbox One. So, okay, because I have a question, and maybe it's just me, but when you play two or three. Does it seem like four? It's just way, way more overpopulated with zombies and harder to get around. It's actually easier in four. You're actually Is able that... to get okay. around. Yeah, you're able to get around easier uh, in four because okay. it doesn't really have like that time limit. Or, uh, I mean, there's a lot of zombies, but they have a lot of space where you can walk around okay. and attack and like get new weapons and stuff. So you're like okay. you're kind of fine. Maybe I'm maybe I just was uh, not used to it anymore, but because uh, I do have four and I beat three, but with four I don't know it just felt like it was more congested and like I I had a harder time getting around without getting like bombarded by hmm. zombies. I don't know. 
maybe it just uh, it's been a while since I played three, but. Yeah, I've I need to play a little bit more three and then jump into four, uh, a little bit more too, because I know one the original one was like I, people say that was kind of still like the best one because of how hard it kind of was, where like when you died, you kind of had to almost start from the beginning, but you kind of have your uh, information follow you along because you only had that one save spot. Yeah, I, I liked one. I I was a bigger fan of two, but I liked one just because the whole camera feature during that time was fun. But now it's you know it, it's been done before, and I and I you know I didn't mind it in four. It was still fun, but it wasn't you know anything really new. I did like how they you know you kind of do the whole almost like condemned where you take pictures of the. You know, oh. different things, and use your you actually use your camera to you know to do stuff. It's kind of cool, but Kadim was creepy as ever. Uh, still, still my favorite. Still my uh, favorite horror game. I don't uh, play scary. Games. I want to remake. Get them out of here. <laughs> no scary games. Yeah, scary games are fun, but Kadim is. I, I think uh, Kadim Two came out for PS3. I think so. Yeah. Uh, but the first one is bonkers, like yeah. scary. I'm like, ooh, this is a new set of fear, and I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah. T- the second one, I was so disappointed with. It just wasn't, just wasn't as good. I don't know what it, what it was. If they, they just didn't, didn't execute very well. <laughs> I don't play scary games. I can't do it. I can't <laughs> do it. You can't make me. <sighs> nope. What nope. if it came? What if it came to Switch? What if there's a scary game that came to Switch? I'm get, you... I'll get, I'll get Resident Evil Revelations one and two when they come to Switch. That's as scary as I go. What, what about Zombie just... U? <laughs> I played Zombie U and it was scary as crap. And guess what? I played with the lights on in the middle of the day. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Suck on that, scary. Ah. Uh. <laughs> And I was, Where's I'm happy that the the graphics were bad in that game. <laughs> so <laughs> they didn't even look yeah. like zombies. They just looked like, I don't know, PS2 sh- light gun <laughs> zombies. <laughs> the Ugh. one that still irks me though is Resident Evil 4 being in the garden with the wolves and the tentacles come out. Uh, just... I'd be like, uh, I have that has made me stop playing that game like for months at some times. Mm. But now I, I'm probably do it. I beat the game, but. It was just like this is ah typical. So yeah, there's there's like yeah. there's this weird difference though between like scary and gory because like to me yes like I like the survival aspect of survival horror and like Resident Evil one and zero like they're slow paced and there's not very many like jump scares or anything. And, like, you're just exploring and figuring out puzzles. with, And, like, the theme of the puzzles is, like, s- scary zombies, you know? Where you mm-hmm. get to, like, Resident Evil 4 and, like, now 7. And, like, the whole thing is, like, oh, we're, we're, you're getting swarmed and overwhelmed. And it's just, like, no, nah, can't do it. Like, Resident Evil 7, no. I watched, like, there's a Let's Play up on the NGR uh, YouTube page. Uh, where Joey, m- me and my friend Joey and Mitch were all playing, and they were, we were like, I was like, no, I can't do this. Like, I'm not playing at all. This, this would give me nightmares. This would give me like sh- the sweats, like the shaky sweats. No, nah, I'm good. I'm good. But you know what? It's weird because every time I I watch like a horror movie or I play like a horror game, scary kind of game, when I go to sleep. I become like an action movie star and it's like I got a sword I got some kind of melee combat <laughs> like I'm like I'm throwing everything in the kitchen sink at whoever is trying to get me like why am I'm, I not like, surprised that was your answer <laughs> because cause it's true like I, because me and Jesse had this talk about horror movies which I, I'm sorry Jesse I didn't get the chance to watch Ichi the Killer I will watch it I'm going. Yes. I am going to check that out. Uh, <laughs> I I I'm not the type of person that oh I'm going to get scared and then just run away. 
when I know I have a chance to at least to survive or do some kind of damage. So I'm going to, I, like in my dreams, I know martial arts, my my blade, my katana is my weapon, and uh, I'm going to fight. <laughs> Man, you. Sure. Yep. And my when I'm like having a nightmare, like I just I can't talk, I can't speak, I can't move. Like it's just, it's just a bad time. It's uh yeah, it's a bad time. For yeah, me. and I'm 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 such a big fan of horror movies that I actually love when I have when I have nightmares. They actually end up being entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so weird. Sorry, I had what is happening? Had this, like, um, it, Corey, we're it, nerves. Because I had a, like one of those reoccurring ones when I was younger. It bothered me, but at the same time, like now that I'm older, I I appreciated it. But I had this crazy dream where like our we still lived in our house. It was our house, but it was like out in the middle of a desert, and mm-hmm. uh, I was hiding underneath our stairs in our basement, and I seen these uh, robots that that looked exactly like my parents kill my real parents. And they didn't know that I had seen that they had done it. And so then I'm running. I quick ran away up the stairs. And as I was running up my stairs, it was just tons of hands coming out of the wall trying to grab me as I'm going up. (laughs) It was such a crazy dream. But I loved it. Wow. (laughs) Wow. That's... Yeah, I couldn't do that. (laughs) I don't even... Yeah. Well, Jesse, what have you been playing? Um, let's see. Bastion I was playing earlier. Um wanna get back into Overwatch because I, I play Siege a lot. I've been playing that, but uh Siege and Overwatch I think are, are kinda similar where it's uh it's more, you know, you work together as a team in order to win versus just going off and doing your own thing and you know, playing with people who only care about what they're doing and you know, not you know, having fun as a as a team. It's so much more fun to just if you work together and I that's why I love Siege, but yeah, that and then I wanna play Bayonetta. Um I do wanna get back into the I have the Halo collection, the Master Chief collection. I wanna play some of that again too and then yeah. Yeah, and then we got to get into Titanfall 2 and play that. I still haven't played the that new uh, mode yet, so. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Edward. And then Mario Kart. <laughs> Mario Kart 2. Yes. Yes. That's a game I can get into. <laughs> that blue shell's scary, though. It's too scary. <laughs> blue shell ain't no joke. Oh, my gosh. The blue shell is no joke. That is no joke. But, but I do love that uh, the power up that you get where you can blast it away if it comes towards you. The horn. Yeah, that horn thing. Yeah, yeah, it does a lot. I like the horn also. Yeah. Uh, I usually save that, and it's just like, and I like how in deluxe you get your two items back. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. Yes. Yeah. Yes for two items in Mario Kart. So. Um. Anyways, Ed, what have you been playing? I told, what, told uh, you what I've been playing. Did we start with you? I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Corey, what have you been playing? Obviously not podcast simulator. Um, what Work have I... simulator. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It's 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 been one of those weeks where I'm just like, I'm ready to like just put a nail in this week's coffin and start a new week. It's... It's been a long week. I have two days off this week, though, so I'm I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, yes. But I've been playing a lot of 2DS, and like we'll get into more of that on Pal Block. But I've been playing a lot of 2DS stuff, uh, just just because it's the new fancy system, and I am more intrigued by the 3DS lineup all of a sudden. So, uh, you know, I've I've been playing. Uh, Mario and Luigi Dream Team. Uh, I've been playing Fire Emblem, but in terms of Xbox, it's our Xbox has just been a Netflix machine lately. I just we've been watching a ton of shows on Netflix that are interesting. Like we finished 
we finally finished the uh, last the f last season of House of Cards like a month ago. We've been watching. We just finished this show called Travelers on Netflix. Uh, it's it's a really good like time travel show. Like it it it's this really unique spin on like time travel in the post apocalyptic future and like they go back in time to try to fix events that would hopefully try to prevent this uh post apocalypse and like it's cool cuz there's there's a couple destiny easter eggs in that show it made me really smile it was it was good cuz like there's like they're betting on race horses and their horses all have destiny exotic weapon names it was just like it was really cool uh but um i've been trying to finish up horizon uh slowly but surely uh, but nothing really, man. This this past week, like, you know, our internet was being really crappy, and we had to fix that issue. And then uh, I was having some editing difficulty trying to get shows up on time, and that was stressing me out. And uh, uh, I guess I've been playing Splatoon 2 a little bit. But, like, I don't know. This week was just a long week, and, like, the last couple days at work, I've just been working, like, extremely long days, and it was just, like... I'm I'm ready just to like <laughs> relax. I cannot wait till I cannot wait till tomorrow at like three o'clock when I'm just like I don't have to be at work for another day and a half. So, <laughs> uh, but really, I haven't really played anything significant in a significant chunk though. I guess uh, just been working a lot. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. That's it for me. Ed, what have you been playing? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ah, uh, man. Oh, the other thing I've been doing is so, like I said in the pre-show, my parents decided to buy this little robot, uh, those Amazon Echo things, like the Alexa things. Yes. And so they are like not the most technologically savvy people in the world. So like they decided, hey, we, where my my mom, uh. My mom cleans houses for a living and she goes to this one guy's house and she has and he has one and she talks to it and she's like, I just tell it to play country music and it plays country music. I'm like, well, that's your first mistake. Uh, but then like she's like, I kind of want one of those. Do you know how they work? I'm like, no, but I can look into it. And she's like, oh, well, I'll just buy some Amazon gift cards and you can buy it. You can buy it and set it up for me. I'm like. Okay, so I <laughs> we bought this stupid little uh, Echo Puck thing that just sits. You have to plug it in. It won't work unless it's plugged in, which is weird, first of all, that it doesn't have a rechargeable battery and you can't take it with you. Uh, but, like, I set it up, and I I was like, let me see your phone. She's like, why? I'm like, because I have to download the app. She's like, will that use gigabytes? I'm like, just give me your phone. And my mom's so worried about using data on her <laughs> on our phone plan and i'm like a we're inside your house you have wi-fi just give me your phone i have to use your phone to set up the, the, the thing so like we did all this amazon music stuff and and got it all set up and they're like marveled that they could talk to a machine and it just does what they want it to do <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny watching old people use technology oh man so like i did that and then my wife and her sister are setting up a youtube page for their business uh don't worry guys it's not girls playing video games so just pick your jaws up off the floor they're doing like uh a home they run a home care agency and they're doing uh like videos on assisting people uh who need assistance in like p taking care of elderly people or alzheimer people with alzheimer's or dementia or just like really kind of struggle through life and need a lot of help. So like, uh, I've been trying to help them film and we actually like, if you're watching the video, I'm not crazy. I, this is the third, like probably the third time this room has looked different in the last four weeks. If you're watching the video version of the show, uh, but we kind of turned the game room into a recording studio and I'm actually, looking on Amazon right now for like more soundproofing. Uh, so like they can do videos like 
once or twice a week in here instead of like shooting 40 at a time and like it not doing it for three months uh so that's kind of where my headspace has been at too instead of gaming uh trying to figure out the best way to implement the green screen so they can show their logo behind them or like you know maybe put layer them on top of a video that like shows them helping people or something so yeah yeah that's cool though that's a cool idea yeah. yes yeah it's something they've been talking about for a while and now like you know we finally have sort of a setup that's we're able to accommodate that and they're testing out and like i actually just got done editing their first video right before we recorded world one one ed so uh i was putting the finishing touches on that when i got home and uh waiting for larry late larry <laughs> so uh there was something else too i don't know that all these projects just started falling into my lap this week oh <laughs> right my parents decided that you know they they just got their first smartphones and now they got they gave me this big binder of cds to put on my laptop so i can load music onto their phone that was the other project <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, wow oh, man it's fun it's fun taking care of old people guys oh, I love you mom <laughs> I know you check in periodically on the different shows that we do and I hope this is not the one you watch <laughs> because I just made fun of you the whole time uh, oh that's Corey oh, I know but anyways Ed yes do we finally have Xbox news to talk about? <laughs> yes, we actually do have some news. Uh, everybody, on August 18th, Thumper is coming out for Xbox One. Uh, build as a rhythm violence game. I don't know why they build it like that. Uh, it utilizes Dude, that game a soundtrack. Is awesome. I know. It utilizes a soundtrack that's equal parts in uh, trancing and uh, sadly, and combines it with a very cool roller coaster X uh, coaster S gameplay loop. Um, it's already out for PC and PS4 and Switch, but developer Drew has announced that the Xbox One releases Xbox eight uh, Xbox One for August 18th. And what Thumper is, it's like you're kind of on this track, and you have to hit the sides at the right time. Uh, to like almost to like this beat um it's kind of trance very like low-key techno to it for its beat style but it is very fun you guys could take a look at the video on youtube and people who own it for switch i played it actually on switch and literally was playing for almost two hours like literally didn't want to put the control down i was just like this is too good because i want to get everything perfect uh, so yeah, that's come to Xbox One. You guys could really check that out. Um, I think I am going. I'm definitely going to double dip, so I am going to get it for Xbox One, uh, and I'm going to pick it up for Switch. No, I can't get it for Xbox One because I'm not going to be here today. It comes out. That's right. Yeah, I actually just watched the video for it uh, today. I was watching because I mean I've I've seen it before, but I was just kind of interested in what it, what it looked like. So. Yeah, I I think like I have it. I the Switch allows you to have your uh wish list in your account and like I have like three or four things and thumpers at the top and like the next time I get a eShop gift card, uh I am going to be getting Thumper because everybody's like it's a rhythm game, but it has this really cool like almost horror action vibe to it and like the music, I guess, is phenomenal. I guess it has, like, this really phenomenal soundtrack. And I've watched some Let's Plays and stuff of it, and it's really cool. Uh, you know, it wasn't uh, at first positioned as, like, a VR game, but, like, the way they they re-edited it for Switch, where they, they pull the camera out just enough for you to have, like, this wider uh, view. And, like, the track, when it lights up, when the beats go and, like, the track lights up, oh, it's so good. It is so good. I, I if even if you're not into rhythm games, like you should mm -hmm. you should look at least watch a let's play of it to determine if you like it or not. Because like it's just really it has this really cool design to it, and, and I think people will really like it. 
So yeah, I, I mean, like I, cause yeah, I loved those rhythm games. I actually like as much as I liked Guitar Hero and stuff like that. I still always go back. To, I still play it. Uh, I have amplitude and and frequency for PS2, and I play those like occasionally. Yeah, yeah. And that's it, what it kind of reminds me of. Yeah, know? it really reminds me of uh, frequency almost. Yeah. But like, yeah. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thumper. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> No, that's okay. Um, Let me sing. Let me sing. (laughs) Okay, continue. continue. Sorry. No. (laughs) See, I'm so good at singing. I don't want to get us a copyright strike. So, (laughs) because you know of the NGR crew, I am the music guy. You should always come to me for your music advice. (laughs) Microsoft is still trying to talk to Sony about crossplay. <laughs> a new FAK dealing with the Better Together update uh, shows that Microsoft is still in talks with Sony on getting a PlayStation uh, 4 to their ecosystem to crossplay for Minecraft. Um, what are your guys' things? Do you think uh, Microsoft's uh, continue to get the uh, Sony to jump on? It seems that they talk to uh, they have Apple, Google, and Nintendo on uh but not sony yet so do you guys think that they should still keep talking to sony um i think (laughs) here's the thing i think with this whole minecraft minecraft cross play thing like sony's the one that looks bad here because even nintendo who tries to protect the the audience and the young audience in particular like with everything they do even they jumped on to this so yes. like I mean when you have like Android, Apple, Nintendo, Microsoft, Windows, Xbox, like you have all these systems interconnected and playing nice and like Sony won't even play nice. Like I don't even think the PS4 version plays nice with the Vita version. Like that's how like not cross play that version is. And it's like Sony's the one that's kinda looks bad. And like I, I don't know, I think I think I understand like Microsoft wants everything to be on the same servers and on the same client and everything and every everything just would work better that way. And I yes. I think Microsoft's gonna keep talking to Sony just for the simple fact that if you got Sony on board, it would probably make things a lot easier server side. You know, where everything would be on the same server. And like as long as PlayStation doesn't play nice, like they're the ones that look bad. And and I'm not like an a super Xbox fanboy by any means, you know. But like, you know, I'm I'm kind of siding with Microsoft on this. Like, I mean, it's I mean, it's not even like they're fighting or anything. But like, I think I'm siding with Microsoft on the basic fact that I think it would be a lot easier in terms of development for them. So. Yeah, because as it stands now, they're just not gonna get the update if they don't. If they don't switch over, they're just not getting. Isn't isn't that how it's gonna work, basically? Yeah, pretty much. So basically, mm-hmm. Sony is gonna deny those people from being able to have the most updated version of it. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I mean, I get it. I I understand. Like uh, the big, you know, the big gripe from people is, you know, they're gonna have to then get an Xbox Live account to be able to play it on their playstation i mean i i understand where people would kind of you know if they don't have an xbox or whatever you know they don't really and you you know we know that for the most part nintendo is always going to be someone's second you know system that they want so either they have an xbox and they have a nintendo if they want to they can play on both you know but you know i i don't know i guess it's a hard thing. I mean, because, you, you know, they obviously they own it. They, you know, Xbox or Microsoft could just say you can't have it. You can't have uh, it at, at all anymore. But they want, you know, kudos to them for, you know, wanting to still be able to, you know, let them people who want to play on every other system still be able to play it. You know, uh, I mean, yeah, because it is mm-hmm. technically a Microsoft game now, isn't it? You know, it's basically their game now. Yes. 
Right. So, and I think yeah, that's I mean, going to, that's going to affect sales for kids who want or people who want Marcus uh who want Minecraft on PS3 or PS4. Uh, yeah. People are going to be like, well, why should I get this if it's not going to be updated like the other systems? You know. Yeah. Yeah. And there's going and if everything works out, there's going to be good talk between Nintendo and Microsoft and Google and Apple that crossplay works for them and yeah. PlayStation is going to look bad about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, you know, I think I th- I think we're starting to see the the old Sony start creeping back into into the landscape. Like I think we've we've noticed that for I don't know, probably a, almost a year now. Uh, you know, they're they're coming back. Like, you know, when they when they were behind last gen, like they made a lot of changes towards the end of the life cycle to try to be more gamer friendly. And then when Xbox came out and said they were doing all these things before they turned around and, and decided not to, like Sony was more, uh, you know, less of a corporate facing company and more of a personality driven company where like you had Adam boys and Shuhei, like this is how you share games with your friends. And they just handed each other a copy of a game. Like they had those types of videos. They had, they were pushing the Indies. They were pushing sales. They were pushing, you know, our box is a hundred dollars cheaper. And like they were pushing all these things. And now we're like, you saw at E3, they announced a bunch of like smaller stuff in their pre E3 thing. And then you get to their conference and it's like first party game, first party game, first party game, first party game, second party game, like all these things that are Sony focused. And like, we're starting to see that Sony, like we're ahead and we're getting a a big ego now type thing. And like, this just kind of bolsters that egotistical stance that it looks like they're taking again. And Microsoft's playing catch up. So they're trying to play nice with everybody and like, you know, it's it's just it it makes Sony look bad, and you know maybe if you know I think I'm going to be on NGP this week, and that news is going to come up. You know that news is going to come up, the Minecraft update, and if Sony's not getting it, like it's going to make them look bad. So Moose and Moose well, and I are going to have a tussle. Well, I think Sony is starting to look bad now. Yeah. Um. And it, not in the sense that, you know, of being number one or anything or having an the ego. They're looking bad because not nothing is being talked about for their games that's supposed to be that's coming this holiday season that people want. So if nobody is really talking about your system or your games, you look bad because that means that you're going to generate less sales and less interest in your games. In your in your platform, not saying that you know, Mark, you know Microsoft has a lot to do to catch up to uh, to Sony, but people are talking about Cuphead. People are talking about the Xbox One X. People are talking about uh, player ba- player battle unknown. Like uh, they're they're talking about Xbox One. So people are making a communication. They might be making questions on if the purchase is worth it but they're talking about it and they're not doing the same thing for Sony right now mm-hmm. you know Nintendo Nintendo already is dominating the conversation so if they're able to get more switches in first there's going to be more conversation to go from that mm-hmm. but no one's really talking about Sony right. and this cross play this cross play is kind of keeping a kind of Sony interest afloat among players. You know, we could talk about the Xbox One X and we could make topics about that all we want. But yeah. with Sony, we're talking about crossplay. If we can't talk about that, what else is there to really talk about that system? And that's going and that's bad if that's the if crossplay is the only thing that's holding interest up for your system to be talked about. Mm-hmm. Well, and honestly, and I feel like, you know, like so many people are are kind of looking at it negatively, like thinking that this is just like because Xbox is behind and, you know, that they're just doing it because of that. And, 
you know, and a lot of people like to bring up, oh, well, Sony asked to have cross play back in the day and, and Xbox turned it down. But you also got to remember, though, it, it, you know, they're running Xbox differently, you know, with with uh, with uh, Phil Spencer. He just seems like a much more positive person and, you know, cares about gaming in general. Yeah, he may work for Microsoft, but he enjoys it in general and wants everyone to be able to enjoy it regardless of what you're playing on. And, right. you know, and that's the thing, you know, yeah, maybe Microsoft turned it down then and that's, that was then and this is now. I mean, it's, you know, they're just running, running their, their company a lot different now from compared to then. And I think ultimately that's, you know, gonna be better for everyone and, and them obviously, but right. it's just, there's no reason to be negative about, you know, all that stuff and, and try to alienate other people just because they're not getting your product i mean if you enjoy you know selling and making games you know you want everyone to be able to play it so and you and you know sony's not worried about kids getting all of that trust me kids are buying kids are getting their parents to buy them grand theft auto and other in ready games and they're making the comments that they're making online so it's yeah. not like it's it's not like you guys are actually protecting them because kids could get a, a sixty dollar gift card or and go on PlayStation right now and actually buy an ready game. Did you? Yeah. There's no age restriction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and didn't I read somewhere that they were talking about like uh, getting a little bit more strict on uh, on you know if people say something you know bad words or whatever that they, online that they're going to be more strict about uh banning people or something like that just recently uh was that rocket league or yeah, yeah i, I think, think it, it was, was for rocket league yeah i think it's for rocket league oh yeah yeah it's like they're just taking away those excuses for sony to say no <laughs> right yeah. because because literally, if Activision would have did that for Call of Duty, it won't have the sales that it needs to have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, video no. games. Don't be be nice, everyone. Be nice on the internet. <laughs> yes. Huh. Uh, so, uh, last bit of news that I got for tonight, uh, or for this episode, uh, Black Hole Complete Edition is coming to Xbox One. It's going to be fourteen ninety nine. This game is... Uh, viewed as a cross between sci-fi and Braid put together. Uh, and you're also going to get the game's DLC that in in, uh, in the system. I mean, for this game. So, yeah, you guys can check that also out. I think it's August... Yeah, August 8th is the day that it comes out. So, you guys actually have this Tuesday coming up that the game is going to be available. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So, Video Jesse, games. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Um, how did you get into the world of Xbox? Um. Well, let's see. I like. I, I guess you know. I loved. Always loved Nintendo, and but I tended, you know, to go towards Sega quite a bit for you know most of the time because I you know I had the Master System and. Now and you're then, the only uh, other person I've ever met that has that master system. Corey, yeah. you know that I had the master system. What? No. Yes. Shh. We've talked about this. <laughs> Ed, you know my brain doesn't function correctly. Corey, I had two master systems because one of the master systems broke. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. My brain hurts. Just kidding. I'm back. Yeah, it's... Uh... Yeah, I loved that Master System. You know, it's nothing like just turning it on without a card in and being yes. able to pick from games. You know, you didn't have to. Uh, you know, I just loved it. And the uh, I had the one with the Safari Hunt and the uh, Hang On. Was it? Yeah, Hang On. Yeah. But yeah, and then, then you know, and then I had the PS PS Two and. And then you know Microsoft came out with that first Xbox and and I. You know, it's kind of. I had one of my friends had gotten it like right away, and 
and we played Halo or whatever, and and uh, I just basically I just had to have it because it was just, you know, at that time it was, you know, the graphics were awesome, and and uh, basically after that I never turned back. <laughs> wow. I you know I I still have my PS2 I still use it but I haven't bought no, bought a PlayStation anything since then. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. I did get a PSP at some point and basically like had 3 games for it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it just it didn't do much for me. Did you but... get the Final Fantasy 7 Avid Children movie on PSP? Oh no! I I mine came with the uh, Spider Man two, I think. So, ah, yeah. yeah. Mine came with Spider Man two. Yeah, mine came with Spider Man two, and then I ended up getting. I think I got both God of War games and Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, and those were the only games I think I ever had for that because I was too into my Game Boy Advance and then the DS when it came out. <laughs> yeah, I I can't even remember what games I got for it. The only one I know I can remember getting for it is I got uh they didn't make it the America they didn't have an American version of it, but I got the the Naruto uh fighting game. I forget what it was called now, but I had to buy the Japanese version. So it was all in Japanese. I couldn't even read any of it, but I I figured it out, you know, the how to get to where I needed to go and stuff, but Nice. But yeah, and but yeah, basically, I with that Xbox One, I loved it, and then you know all my friends were were modding theirs, and <laughs> it was just you know it's just completely different. It was it just was something new that that you just really didn't see that much at that time. It's just a you know such a versatile uh, thing to have, so it's just a lot of fun. And that basically I stuck with Xbox since. Oh, okay. You gonna ask me how I got into the world of Xbox, Ed? Corey, how did you get into the world of Xbox? Uh, I don't remember. Halo came out, and then <laughs> Fable came out, and we were playing Halo. Uh, at one of my friends' house, and I was like, I think I kind of want an Xbox. I think getting this Dreamcast was a bad idea, and so. Uh, for Christmas, I saved up a bu- I All I asked for were, were be- Best Buy gift cards. And I went and got the Xbox bundle that was... It was Halo 1. Uh, Brute Force, I think. Mm-hmm. And whatever that, that Xbox football game. Like, where everybody looked like they were just roided out. I think it was like NFL Fever or something. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was the bundle that I got for $200 at Best Buy. <laughs> and it was, I was like, hmm, this football game kind of sucks. And then I was like, huh, Brute Force kind of sucks. So I ended up trading them both in for Tony Hawk 2X, which was like, <laughs> it was like a remix of Tony Hawk 1 and 2, but it was only available on Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> it was like this really weird thing. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm just going to go play Tony Hawk 3 on GameCube. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know. It, 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 Xbox was weird because it had all these like cool ideas for games. But like the games weren't exactly great. Like I remember I was excited. Remember that the that action rpg with the blue person with the blue guy azure azure or something Uh, oh azure yeah that one and like i was excited because that game looked really cool and it was just not it was kind (laughs) of so i like so like i liked my xbox but like i would only play the exclusive games on xbox like fable halo jade empire Knights of the Republic 1 and 2, and uh, we had this weird obsession with Fusion Frenzy for a while, Uh, (laughs) but we only played the demo that was on the Halo 1 disc. (laughs) We we didn't actually have the full game. We just played the demo on the Halo 1 disc, 
And then, like, <laughs> I remember Jet Set Radio Future and Sega GT came on one disc. And I was pretty excited about that because I love Jet Grind Radio on Dreamcast. Uh-huh. And that, so Jet Set Radio Future came out on Xbox. And then all the Dreamcast games started coming to Xbox. So I was like playing crazy taxi and then that that weird third game high rollers which like lets you customize your taxi with like hydraulics and stuff you were like wow i was like this this is this is not crazy taxi this is weird it was like pit my ride meets crazy taxi uh and then i i almost got shinmu 2 when it came to xbox but i decided against it because i was like I don't know what Shenmue is, and I didn't play Shenmue 1. And it turns out I actually went back and played Shenmue 1 like a couple years after that. And I was like, I'm glad I didn't buy Shenmue 2 because Shenmue's not a great game. <laughs> did Did you get Mech Assault 2? Oh, I think yeah. It, wasn't it Mech Assault 2? Yeah. Didn't it come with two discs? So if you, if you had a friend that had a Xbox as well, you could land party it, and you it, didn't have to buy a second copy. It, yeah, it wasn't like the full game though. It was only like the co-op stuff. Just, yeah, yeah, or like the the online. Cause I remember doing stuff. that. Yeah, yeah. There was something weird with Mech Assault Two. Uh, I remember playing Mech Assault One a lot when it came out too. Um, yeah, and then I remember it was a big deal when the original Xbox got the Metal Gear. <laughs> like extra version editions before PlayStation because the series had never been on Xbox before and they ended oh, up yeah. getting like subsistence and whatever the other one was first and people were really upset it was like their VR mission version of the game but uh, well I I know for me when nobody I asked you Ed Okay. I'm just kidding. Ed, how did you get into the world of Xbox? Oh, thank you X. for asking me, Corey. Yes, X. X. Uh, I actually ended up buying the Xbox when it was 149.99, and like when it like was way cheap because I think 360 was about to come out. So um, I picked it up really late, and since you know GameStop had a good deal on a whole bunch of Xbox games. I just ended up, ended up picking up a, a whole bunch of used copies. So, the first one I definitely looked for was Psychonauts. <laughs> because that was the game that uh, it was up. It was up my, uh, you know, I was I'm a big plat- 3D platformer. I love, in fact, I just love platform games in general. 2D, 3D, I'm there to play them. And Psychonauts did, wasn't really getting no love. And I couldn't understand why. So I picked it up and I understood why this game was just phenomenal. It, it, sh- it deserves the sales that it should deserve. Because um, the music is fantastic. The characters and the story writing is awesome. Like there's some good comedy, some good challenge. And that just drew me to the world of Xbox. And uh I think this is this is what started me off kind of as being a multi uh owner of systems. Um having a PlayStation 2, having a GameCube and having an Xbox. And my thing was that my PlayStation 2 was definitely for my, my role playing games. My Xbox was were for used games that were cheaper than the PlayStation 2 version or GameCube. And then everything for GameCube was always brand new. Nothing was used. But maybe one or two games might have been used. But everything else was, like, brand new. Uh, So I would kind of get, like, cheap games, bad games, good games uh, with my Xbox. Um, And... I enjoyed it, and then the disk drive messed up, and I couldn't play my Xbox anymore. Like, it wouldn't, wasn't loading anything, and, and if people know that the Xbox is like a murder weapon because it's like three VCRs put together, and you could plunge or somebody, <laughs> uh, or, you know, bust your toe if it fell on your foot. Like, it was heavy. So, like, once my Xbox died, I was just like, well, I got GameCube and PlayStation 2. Uh 
And then 360 happened. And I skipped that whole generation because I read stories about the chips falling out and it took four systems, four or five systems to get it right. And I was still like, nope. So. That's so funny. <laughs> Even the controller was heavy. <sighs> like, <laughs> like that, you could have used the controller almost as the whip from Castlevania. <laughs> oh, jeez. Ah, but man, that I remember going through Xbox 360s like it was. I, yeah, I I probably had like four 360s before I had one that really worked. Like it was, it was awful. Like I just, I remember the first like my first one was starting to go, and I was like. It was right around the time the Elite 360s were coming out with like, uh-huh. with like the really big hard drive. And I think it was like 50 gigs instead of 20 or something stupid, Yee. something stupid like that. And I was like, all right, I'm going to sell my launch 360 to my friend so I can buy the Elite. So I sold him. I sold him my Elite version or I told him my launch version with uh, Gears of War and oblivion i think for like i don't know something stupid like he he was stupid for paying me for that it was like it was something like 200 dollars for it and i ended up going to get the elite version and i found the collector's edition of gears of war one at gamestop so i ended up getting that too and like (laughs) literally probably like two or three months later that xbox died (laughs) and i was like I felt bad, but I was like, "Nah, you you knew about this problem." Yeah. Uh, I still but, got one of the games. If anyone can see this, uh, Silent, Silent Hill, Silent Hill two. Stop! Yeah. With, what is with the scary games? It's August. <laughs> October's two months away. <laughs> yeah, I still got. I got like three or four uh, Xbox three sixties. A bunch of them that. Well, all of them. The the disc drive doesn't read the disc. It's basically just a um, Netflix box. <laughs> I use it, for, you know, in our living room to basically watch uh, a- <laughs> movies and shows. And that was a screwed up thing with the 360 errors that people still were buying the 360 even after all that stuff messed up. And then when PlayStation 3 came out, uh. PlayStation 3 was, you know, yeah, it had its problems with the price and everything, but it was more reliable than the 360. But people just stayed there. And then Gears Gears of War happened, and it was just, like, it was a done deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well the, well, the thing for me was it was, like, uh, at that time, Sony didn't have the games that I wanted to play, so mm-hmm. it didn't matter. If I if I wanted to play my games that I want to play, then I have to get another 360. <laughs> All right, you wasn't into was Ridge a... Racer. Ridge oh. Racer, no, no, no <laughs> I didn't get into that. It's the best game ever. Did you guys ever play Death Roll for Xbox One for the very first Xbox? I mean, no, I no. didn't. It basically like what it was is it was kind of you know like how you've got with with uh like Overwatch and stuff where you you basically have these teams of that are you know all they have their own theme to them or whatever each each mm-hmm. team has you know is just different looking and then it essentially was uh, Rocket League but you played as these characters and you threw this frisbee to like disc thing to each other. Yeah. And then there was a, there was a hoop thing that you had to try to throw, you know, get the ball thing or what the frisbee disc thing into to score. So basically it was a lot, a lot like uh rocket league, but, but you played wow. as characters on, on like these crazy, like Thunderdome looking like arenas and, it, it was a lot of fun. I we used to play that, and like you said, Fusion Frenzy. I used to play that with my friends all the time. But yeah, yeah. I, with my friends, we just used to do a lot of Halo, Halo One, and Halo Two. Yeah. Uh, I never. 
as odd as it sounds, like everybody loves Halo 2, but I I never played Halo 2 online because our internet was never good enough. Like I never got the whole like this is why Halo 2 is good thing. And it it always bothered me for some reason that like I never got into Halo 2, but like I I didn't even beat the Halo 2 campaign until like the week before Halo 3 came out. And I was like, I think I'm going to play through Halo 1 and 2 again. And then I played through Halo 1 and 2 before Halo 3 came out. But like for me, Xbox is all about LAN parties with Halo 1. Like we would go <laughs> e every Saturday, we would go over to my friend's house in his basement. We would lug these TVs in the, into his basement. And like <laughs> we we had enough people on a weekend where it would be it would be full 8v8 but we'd have like two sets of 8v8 going there would be 32 people stuffed in his basement and we'd all bring money and drinks and like you know just stuff to eat and play halo all day and it was awesome yeah and then like yeah, that's what i did with two and then yeah. like by the time halo 2 came out like everybody was like prepping to go off to college and everybody was prepping to like leave and nobody like at, at the time like colleges didn't have like quote good internets you had to use mm -hmm. whatever internal thing they were using for school and so like we couldn't play halo 2 online and i didn't have the money to buy xbox live so i just kind of gave up on it and so went and started playing my ps2 rpgs and you know by the time halo 2 was big i was just, just like i don't know i don't i i can't play halo anymore i guess <laughs> i mean we <laughs> like the way our our dorm rooms were set up were like hey we you can have land parties like across dorm rooms and stuff so that's ended up what we did with halo but but at that point, people were coming into our room to play Smash on GameCube or, like, Mario Kart or something else, you know? Because, like, GameCube is freaking awesome. And right. Halo was, like, at, like 360 was getting ready to come out. and Or maybe it was out because that was the first time I realized, like, oh, there's a new Xbox out. Because, like, I, I wasn't really paying attention because I was, I don't know, I was too into like i don't know what i was into at the time i just wasn't paying attention to video games as much as i used to and like i saw gears of war and i was like oh this is why nobody cares about halo anymore <laughs> so pretty much and then i made i made the girl i was dating at the time buy me an xbox 360 for for christmas and then i ended up leaving that school and then I broke up with her because it was three hours away. <laughs> wow. It was like three months later. Oh, man. That wow. was, uh, yeah. 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 I, I, I know the online community for 360 was huge. So that solidified um, its place in gaming. So that brings us to now for actually Xbox One. And uh, Jesse, what made you choose Xbox One? Well, I, for me, like, you know, even though I had all the troubles with, uh, you know, with the 360, mm -hmm. but I still, I think... I think most of it is due to like you know most of my friends have the xbox because we've kind of you know always just like a lot of times that's our way you know uh, the easiest way to be able to play or you know get together sometimes when it wasn't easy to do it in person mm -hmm. is to go online and you know and play together and stuff and and regardless of what people say i still think xbox has the best you know when it comes to you know doing stuff online and making it easy to you know communicate you know the just their the way everything's set up for the for talking and chatting is just so much better i think and so basically for me it was just 
I don't know. It just worked the best for me, I guess. The functionality of the system. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, and I love, I love music, and you know, and all that kind of stuff. And I've got Groove, so I can listen to my music on, you know, on my Groove on Xbox while I'm doing other stuff, and and I can, you know, I can put it on my phone and do it, and you know, it's just basically it's so easy to kind of stay connected with all the different things that I that I use on it, you know, and I don't have to just have my Xbox One to do it, so. Yeah, and you, Corey? I mean, I got an Xbox One for Christmas uh, when the Master Chief Collection came out. I didn't get it right away. Uh, All my friends ended up getting PlayStation 4s, so, like, I don't know. I, I usually wait for systems until, like, after launch, uh typically unless it's like a nintendo system and i just always just go right at launch to get those but like i got i got an xbox one for master chief collection uh but i really got it because i liked the direction that phil spencer was leading the xbox like you know he had just been promoted and he has a ton of good ideas he's got he doesn't have like this the typical like you know i i I think everybody knows this from interviews and stuff he doesn't have the typical suit persona like he's just a person that goes out there and talks about stuff and he's Mm -hmm. you know he still has like the pr guy hovering over his shoulder but he doesn't like try to hide anything you know he's genuine i guess is what i'm trying to say and like you know i i like that and i want to support that you know, that persona of like genuine, and this is the genuine experience we're going to offer. And like he came out and said on, on the giant bomb late night show where he was like, yeah, I totally expect to sell way more S's and X's next year. And that's fine. Like who, what, what company wants to hear? Like we're putting out a new product, but we're going to sell our old, more of our old product. Like what company wants to say that? But he came out and said it. So like, that's when I got my Xbox and then I turned around and got, I traded my fat Xbox in for an Xbox one S and I, I like it a lot. Like I just, I like the controller. I like the functionality. I, I, I think the, the user interface is a little cumbersome, but I think I'm just used, not used to like all that busyness, you know, like I, I think the switches interface is really simple. I, think the Wii U's interface was relatively simple, a little slow and clunky, but like still easy to use. And like, you know, I'm, I was so used to that Xbox 360, like that last update was just like the panels and really easy to read and really easy to use. And I, I wish they would go back to the 360 panels. It just worked. Not, not like the, the original Xbox 360 dashboard, but you know, the last one that they, that they currently have on the 360. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So like I I I think Xbox is moving in the right direction and Ed we've had this talk multiple times where like if they can just get that one or two like either rejuvenated IP or like a new IP that excites people like I think Xbox can excite people, you know? I think yes. I think a game like Crackdown and like getting somebody like Terry Crews, who's very easy to, to watch. He's very easy to, you know, laugh at, be fun. Like he's, he's an awesome comedian and an awesome actor. Like that's a cool guy to get behind a franchise that may not have a lot of eyes on it. You know, like that's a step in the right direction. You know, you see Ori and that franchise is a step in the right direction. I think, Sea of Thieves, I think I think once people play that game and really see what it is, you know, people will be excited to go back into that world. You know, Destiny is a strong IP on that system, even though Sony has all the exclusive stuff. Like Destiny One sold just as well on Xbox as it did as PlayStation. Yes. And I mean Xbox's online infrastructure is way better than Sony's, so like you have that. And, you know, if they do something exciting with Halo 6, 
You know, that's that's the IP that needs to rejuven be rejuvenated the most, I think. Like Halo 4, I I liked Halo 4 a lot, but like I know a lot of people didn't really care for it and I don't know if that was just the internet being loud that it wasn't Bungie, but like I liked Halo 4 a lot, but I I think Halo 5 was a giant misstep and not focusing on Master Chief. Uh so like I think Halo 6 needs to if they can rejuvenate Halo, make it make it play like Halo 5 but tell a great story, have great characters that you interact with instead of just like Oh, like if you didn't read the books, you're not going to know who blue team is like that really bugged me, uh, you know, and, and it have strong follow up IP like gears always is. And, you know, Titanfall, I think is really, uh, associated with the Xbox brand just from that first game being exclusive. Like you have these strong IP tied to the Xbox brand or our Xbox exclusives, you know, maybe fable gets a reboot at some point like they have a strong catalog if they just if they just figure out how to use it in the right way or put the right development team behind it or or something like that like i think i think xbox is definitely on the right track i i just i am excited to watch where it goes but like just it it almost has that i in in the rare thing it being connected to nintendo somehow in some weird way like it always pushed me towards Xbox a little bit more like the rare stuff. And, and yes, so maybe that weird connection to Nintendo makes me choose Xbox over PlayStation most of the time, but I don't know. We'll see. I know I just rambled a lot, but I was trying to get my thoughts out. And as like, (laughs) it sounds good in my head, but like sometimes my sentences don't form correctly, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I think they have a lot of good yeah. IP. They have a lot of nostalgic IP now. You know, they're getting into that territory where like people are nostalgic for Halo. People are nostalgic for that first Gears game. They are nostalgic for like the rare stuff, Banjo. Like a lot of people want a new Banjo. A lot of people for some ungodly reason want a new Battle Toads. Like <laughs> they have these IP that people care for and I think you know, putting the right teams behind it. Like even State of Decay is a strong IP and State of Decay two looks awesome. Like yeah, I I, I didn't wait. I didn't really play a lot of the first one. I I it was too buggy and too janky for me, but like they're putting a triple A budget behind it now and it looks like they're really fleshing out the uh building mechanics and the, the survival aspect of it. And so they have some strong IP. They just need to like you know, execute. Let's not forget Cuphead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. can't wait for that game. It looks like yes. so much fun. Well, I know for me, uh, coming back to the Xbox, not family, but to the brand uh, with Xbox One, it definitely was Ori in the Blind Forest and Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, Rise just looked beautiful, looked fun to play. And because Tomb Raider, the reboot was so good, and it was exclusive for Xbox. I'm like, well, I'm going to have to get a one because I don't do PC games. And then when I see or in the Blind Forest, that just certified that this is going to be the next-gen console I need to own because not only is this ter- telling a, a story, an emotional story, this artwork looks fantastic. Like, this is the this is the Nintendo that I like when X, when Microsoft goes that route. You know, making a Nintendo S gay, and ever since that, I was just before I even got my PS4. Like a couple of weeks later, after I bought my Xbox One, I was gaming more on my Xbox One than I do on my PS4, and buying more games on one. Because, not saying that PS4 is a bad system, but there was just I was just like, I feel like I feel like Microsoft learned, and. If you play, if you play their games, they really did make up for their mistake, and it, the games just feel. I mean, you know, I, I sometimes just can't tell the difference on um, both systems, but I just find myself 
like if a triple A title comes, I'm getting it for Xbox One, unless there's a sale on the on PS4, uh, or if I got too many uh, games that I wanted or needed for uh X for between those two systems, and I got too many on Xbox, then I'll get it for PS4. But I'm usually looking at the Xbox One case and be like, okay, let me get that, let me get that. That's on sale. It's not on sale on PS4. And I buy it. If I do anything, like a lot of my digital purchases is on PS4 because they do flash sales. But I'm getting physical, like like new game physicals for Xbox One. You know, and they learn from the controller because I didn't like the 360 controller. I got, I've played the Xbox One controller and it's very comfortable. And I, the thing, the thing with Xbox is that, you know, people want to compare it to like PC, and because of definitely with the Play Anywhere initiative, sometimes you not everybody play PC games. Some people really play games on their console only. Um, sometimes some people feel like it's, it shouldn't even be like a console war or anything. And you should play anywhere or get games for any system. That's how I feel like you should get games for any system that you feel comfortable with. It's just and one to enjoy. Uh, I feel like with Xbox One and definitely with OX coming, I think, they, I think they're going to be good for the future. And I could, if they continue to go this route and, you know, learn their marketing, get better marketing out first. I think that's what one thing Microsoft definitely needs to do is get marketing out first. Uh, I think they're going to be good for the future. I, and I feel bad that people who, who still hold on to that mistake that Microsoft made the reason why they're PlayStation 4 owners because of that mistake. I think some people need to really let that go. And yeah. <laughs> and and if you get a slim or OX, I'm like, try Gears of War 4. Try some of their backlog category. category. If you are feeling retro, once the uh, original Xbox games come out for you to play, or even pick up their Game Pass, like really give Microsoft a try. You know, I took a first step by giving them a try. Yeah, that Game Pass, by the way, is like secretly one of the best things <laughs> Xbox has going for it. Like, I mean, it mm-hmm. it has it has Gears of War and Halo Five on it. Like, <laughs> plus, you know, what is? I think it's up to like 120 games right now, like uh, on Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Like, right, that's a good deal for t- ten bucks a month. I would totally like. I I almost it's, just want to sign up for it just to like because there's games on there that like I would play but I don't want to spend money on like I guess real money I guess is what you would call it but like for 10 bucks a month I'll try like you know I'm sure a candidate a good candidate for that right now I think 6 months from now is going to be Agents of Mayhem right like that yeah. game's not getting a lot of buzz around it it looks like an interesting concept, but I it's one of those games where I feel like people don't want to spend $60 on it. But in six months, if it comes to Xbox Game Pass and it gr- grows an audience and, like, that's where people find it, I think, I you know, that it's going to help with discoverability, too, you know? so Right. And the, and X, the Game Pass is dominating over PlayStation now. Well, yeah, because you the the big thing for Game Pass is you can download the game straight to your console, right? Instead yeah. of instead of having if you have if you have anything less than spectacular internet, like PlayStation Now is gonna suck for you. I'm sorry, like we, I, I spend the extra money to have good internet in our apartment, and I've tried PlayStation Now wired into our great internet it's not the best but it's like it's 50 it's 50 megs down and 10 up so like i'm sitting here with 50 megs down and you're telling me i can't play like assassin's creed without it being laggy or you know because like i wanted to try assassin's creed rogue which is one of the only assassin's creed games i haven't played and it's, Uh. it's like the pseudo sequel to black flag which was my favorite assassin's creed game it's got this cool twist to where you play as the bad guy like 
that's a cool story. And I'm like, I want to play this because it, I was waiting. I was really waiting the, for the port to come to Wii U or Xbox One or PS4 eventually, and it never did. And so I'm like, I want to play this game, and I tried on PlayStation Now, and it was awful. Like, it was blurry. It was laggy. Like, it kept making these screeching sounds to where, like, the sound wasn't coming through all the way. So it was like, eh, eh. Like, that's what it sounded. That's literally what the so- it sounded like. And I was like, this is and unbearable. This is digital. Yeah. And I'm like, this is this is terrible. I can't. I can't do this. Like, I, I cannot do this. I'm sorry. And, like, apparently it's gotten a lot better since, since you know, six months to a year ago when I tried it. But, like, it's still... I would rather just download the game to my console and play it. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, kind of ridiculous that they didn't do that, you know. I like, I'm know. not knocking PlayStation now. It's a cool idea. It's just, like... Yeah. If it does... it's it's It relies on too many things that are shaky and people can't like don't pay for great internet like there's a lot a lot of people don't pay for they're not going to shell out the extra 30 or 40 dollars a month in internet just to play to stream games you know that you can buy and, used for like three dollars now and it, it's kind of weird because i'm like why can't you treat this just like if i was buying the game from the store yeah yeah you know, it, at least. Oh, go ahead, Jesse. I was just gonna say it worked for uh, Sega TV, but the games are a little bit more uh, graphic based <laughs> now, so it's not gonna work anymore. Oh my gosh! Oh, I Sega remember. TV. I remember Sega TV. Like when I saw that, I was like, I need that, and like my parents wouldn't do it, and I was so mad, and like I refused to play Earthworm Jim because that was the game they were showing on Sega TV. I'm like. I'm not going to play Earthworm Jim because that's Sega TV and I can't have it, so I'm not going to play it. <laughs> or the Mega Man, the Mega Man game. Oh, Oops. yeah, that weird, yeah. the weird Genesis Mega Man game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. But- yeah, my, my friend, my neighbor uh, friend had it, so we'd go over to his house and play it. Yeah, I was... uh. Uh, me and Corey like DMC, Devil May Cry, and uh, the Xbox One controller just fits it. It's way better than the PS4 controller. I'm like, I know I play DMC on PS3, but I'm like, I could do my combos and uh, and other stuff easier on my Xbox One controller than I can yeah. on the PS4. Yeah, that was the first game I played with my, my free trial of the, the Game Pass. I was playing that. I enjoyed it. I I almost want to get a game pass just so I can continue playing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, playing in turbo mode is really good. I, I love love it in turbo mode. I think I'm yeah, actually. Yeah, it is a good I, game. I think I'm gonna go back to that game and actually try to get all the achievements for that game. I almost did it on 360. Uh, there was like two other things I needed to do, but like I think I'm gonna go back and actually try to get the achievements for that because that's well, like we're supposed to do an LPMP. Right? I know, I know. We need to do that. We need to schedule time to do that too. Yeah. Uh, maybe Tuesday or Thursday because those are the days I'm off this week. I'm off Thursday. Oh yeah, we should do it. We should get up early and just do it. Uh. We'll talk after the show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. So. <sighs> but uh. But yeah. yeah uh, uh. Last question to you guys. <laughs> uh. Last question. Um. And I know. I don't want to make it OX related or anything like that. But how do you guys feel overall of Xbox now? Like. Just as like just, the, just, the company, yeah, just, like uh, just the just the system, uh, you know, well, the brand pretty much. How do you feel about Xbox now? Uh, do you do you think that the evolution of the systems, you know, were for were you know were great or anything or disappointing? Uh, or you know, just like how did you completely feel about just the Xbox brand altogether? 
I mean, I think I think the Xbox One is the best system they've ever built, like or like the S. You know, I think it's a sleek looking system. I think the online capabilities are better than they've been and like the controller is like that slight improvement on the xbox 360 controller that like i like the 360 controller mm-hmm. uh but like i had to buy that chat pad to weigh it down <laughs> so like it <laughs> felt right and so like i still ne- i still need to order a chat pad for my three my xbox one controller but uh they made those tiny improvements on uh the xbox one controller that just made it fit perfect to where it almost rivals the gamecube controller is my favorite controller and like the switch oh. the switch controller the switch pro controller is really close too. like i really like the way the switch pro controller feels too yeah but yeah uh i i i don't know man the, the controller just feels really good and you know i i wish they would fix the store i wish they would fix the uh user interface i think it's still really clunky i think they need to go back to the blade system from 360 the not the original blade like i said earlier but like the the last update for 360 that made those screens slide so nice uh and maybe that will come with the new avatar update that's coming soon uh i think that stuff needs fixed but like as an overall gameplay experience i think the xbox one the thing i like about the xbox one too i should have mentioned too is like for some reason playstation 4's games look washed out like there's something about the visual fidelity of playstation 4 games like it's sharper i think i think the games look a little bit better in terms of like sharpness and quality and that's just based on the power that's inside the ps4 but the colors look so washed out to me. Mm-hmm. And like I've checked my TV, I've checked to see if it's on game mode, I've checked to see if it's on dynamic mode or normal or movie mode and like all the settings are the same in the outputs and stuff for my one and my PS4, but like the colors on the Xbox just pop more. Like Tomb Raider, like that opening scene where she's wearing that red coat like it's red on xbox one and i know that sounds weird but it's like on ps4 it's just like this dull red like that it and but and on the on the xbox one it's like this bright red that you can you can tell that it's red in the snow and like you know the the greens when you go into that first uh like when you're running and the temple's collapsing and you run into the temple when there's like the the you know that what I'm talking about right after the snow section. Yeah. Uh, like the greens pop, like the browns are just like bright and, and you know, the fire, the way it lights things up is not, it looks like a fire on a wall instead of being washed out. And like, I know it's not my PlayStation cause I've tried it with two different PlayStations. All the settings are the same. I even plug the inputs. Like there's just something about PlayStation that the colors seem washed out. And that's what I like about Xbox One is everything looks bright and clean and and colorful and you know even in like Gears of War and Halo everything looks colorful and, and bright and just it's more pleasing to look at and and you know that's I like that even in Destiny like you know how many hours I put into Destiny and when you go back and forth between the consoles and the game looks so much i mean it doesn't look different but like it's brighter it's it's louder it just it looks better on xbox one so that's what i like that's what i like about it is like i I think the color the way it it produces the color is better yeah 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 uh uh, for me and then jesse i'm gonna let you in uh for me i think uh they made up for their mistake with Xbox 360 alone, and you know, I feel like with the Xbox when they when they came into this game, uh, they didn't know nothing, and so they had to learn. And it seems that when 360 came, they had enough information to be the dominant, and I will give them that they were the, the dominant system. But the, that chip failure, as a, from a company who is known for 
their software and a little bit of their hardware, they just should have known better to really try to rectify it easier, and they did it. Uh, but I feel like with Xbox One, is that it? This is like not their Wii U or anything like that, but this was something that Microsoft had to learn. You know, Nintendo already experienced it. Sony experienced it kind of with the PlayStation 3. Uh, But Microsoft had to learn what happens when you're not at the top. When, When you feel like you're, when you feel like your goal is to always be the dominant and be the top, it's, it's not always to say, uh, or not say it's already to say that when you fall from the top, how do you rebuild from the ground up again? And I think Microsoft needed that somewhat awakening. And, you know, they're still rebuilding. Um, for me personally, I, I like the Xbox one. You know, I prefer over the PS4, not to knock any Sony players or anything like that. But I feel like for next gen gaming, if people want to see it that way, uh, graphic wise, I think it's better on Xbox One than PS4. Um, anything that's going to be next gen gaming is always going to come from Nintendo. There's no doubt about it because Nintendo believes in innovation, and Microsoft and Sony likes to play it safe. You know, uh, but you know, I, I believe that Microsoft is in a good place. Hopefully, the OX. Um, really pushes through like i really hope it does sell and it just motivates microsoft to really put out the best gaming experience that that company could put out uh so jesse i'm gonna hand it off to you yeah i'm i'm you know definitely feel the same way it's you know i i'm you know it is kind of a good thing that you know that it happened with the 360 and it kind of you know showed them that if you if you want to be on the top you got to try sometimes and and uh you know the having the all those problems and the issues and being able to learn from that you know it's because when you're you know when you're at the top and you don't have to worry about anything sometimes you get lazy and sometimes you you know don't try maybe as hard as as you should be and and I think, you know, this kind of gave them a, a chance to to learn that, you know, if we're going to keep keep making, you know, good products and all that stuff, we got to pay a little bit more attention to things. And and I do think that they did learn a lot from, you know, the failures of the 360 and, and you know, and learn that, you know, and especially like we were talking about Phil Spencer and him having a more positive attitude. And I, you know, I think it's just you know, ultimately the, the main reason that, you know, I did get an Xbox one is because it just seemed like they, they learned. And, you know, I know a lot of people, I would constantly hear, Oh, I'm not getting an Xbox one because the red ring of death. And it's like, yeah, well that was the 360. This is the, you know, the Xbox one and, you know, and they're going to learn from those mistakes. Do you think they're going to just do the same mistake over again and then expect people to, you know, just still buy their product, you know. So, I mean, there's just a lot of things that I enjoy with the way that they handle their business. And and for me, you know, I kind of just want to support, you know, positivity, I guess. So, there's a, you know. And the, the big thing, I forgot to say this earlier, the big thing oh. that sold me on getting the Xbox One was the, uh, was actually Titanfall. I couldn't wait for that game because I I just at that point I had had it with Call of Duty and I just I did end up getting some more of the Call of Duty games but just because other friends were still wanting to play that and you know at one point I think one of my friends got it got one for me I didn't actually buy it but I, (laughs) I just I'm just done with them and there's just so many more better options now so but yeah but yeah, I just I just enjoy, you know, the way the Xbox One works and you know, and like I said before, I'm kinda I have a lot I like media stuff, so it definitely is uh a lot more fun for me because they've got you know, got a lot of good stuff that I like to use, so it all works really well for me, so all right. 
Well, guys, I think that's going to do the show. Corey, I'm handing it back over to you. Yeah, this is a uh, man. We've been going for well. Okay, my counter says two two oh nine, but like <laughs> probably like half hour. That was like pre-show banter. But well, yeah, I think we're gonna put that pre-show banter at the end of this episode. So like for for us, it's the end of the episode. But stay tuned. Well, you can hear some cool <laughs> Ninja Turtle talk and some other other banter but anyways uh thank you so much for listening to arsenal x uh this is ngr radio's xbox show uh listen to our family of shows nerds gone platinum uh nintendo pal block which ed and i are also on uh yes. ngr radio world one one podcast the brew review uh check out our friends shows you know i always like to give a shout out to our friends you know the xbox dive uh james and chris are, are doing a good job over there uh, the shot cast. I think uh, Josh Brandt, friend of NGR, is doing some stuff over there with that. Uh, and you know, Antonio is still trying to get his Switch Switch Talk YouTube show off the ground. So uh, you should check out Antonio Gian's Switch Talk show if you are into Nintendo Switch and want to know about the games that are on that platform. So uh, let's see what else. Like, subscribe, and share to our YouTube page uh, if you're listening to us. Our audio version rate us leave a comment uh tell us how we can improve uh leave us questions in the facebook group and stuff like that uh but i'm just gonna hand it off to our guest jesse uh jesse where can we find you if uh you want to be found i guess some some people don't like to be found <laughs> i don't know well you can find me in the ngr uh community uh page usually posting stuff but um, other than that, I mean, if you want to add me on Facebook through there or whatever, that's fine. I, I don't really care. So, and then I do have Twitter, but I don't really, don't really use it a whole lot anymore. Actually, I just been kind of sticking in the, the NGR community. So <laughs> it's more fun. Yes. Fun. Less, less to worry about. That's true. That's true. Twitter is toxic. Let me tell you. Yeah. Uh, Ed, where can we find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at that retro code, and you can hear my podcast, Optional Opinion, on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Music, The Real FM Player, and other podcast apps. Check out my uh, series, The Moment, at skirmishfrogs.com. Um, this, actually, by the time you guys are seeing this video, um, I will have a blog up on uh, the 8th on Tuesday. Uh, for the bad, bad review, well, review a bad game day. So I will have that title game up. If you guys see what it is, then you know how I'm going to be feeling about this game. Uh, still not going to reveal it. Uh, you'll see it and you'll know why. <laughs> um, you guys can follow me on uh, also on Twitch at the Lyrical One, where I do my Let's Learn series. And you can read Optional Opinion blogs on IGN.com under Anime E N I M E. I am getting ready to do my beauty of video, the beauty of video games, Volume Three for September so you guys will be able to read those blogs and hear those podcasts uh, and also I will have also be having my special guest on Optional Opinion Mr. Jesse Douglas and we're going to be talking about Spirit to the Way so um, if you guys want to uh, watch that video uh, rent it if you guys got it on Blu-ray watch it again uh, we're going to have that discussion coming in uh in for october uh because they're doing uh a film festival for uh studio ghibli films and uh i want to do one on spirits of the way like like compliment it so uh that will be out in october so you guys will be able to check that out Nice. So it's an amazing movie. It deserves its own podcast. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Uh, I've never seen it. <gasps> no. Check it uh, out. I'm going to. I'm going to. I have a whole list of things I need to watch. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> before I plug my stuff, I also want to say that uh, we are looking into live streaming our sh recordings of our shows on twitch uh twitch.tv slash ngr radio uh the the page is all set up ready to go 
we just uh, need to get everybody's schedules down so we can have, you know, a schedule for Twitch uh, so we can have some sort of, of mini following. So, uh, yeah. So, anyways, you can find me at Corey Hudson in HD on Twitter, Corey in HD on Instagram. You can find me hanging out in the NGR Radio Facebook group. Uh, if you are a creator, we also have the NGR Radio Creators Corner where you can uh, throw around some ideas or ask people for ideas or ask for guests or, you know, promote your stuff, that kind of stuff. Get feedback, stuff like that. Uh, you can find NGR Radio on Twitter at NGR Radio Podcast. Uh, yeah, Arsenal X every Wednesday, 10 a.m. On your favorite podcast <laughs> service of choice. <laughs> Jeez. Yes. <laughs> Ed, why did I let you let you let me name this show Arsenal X? Because it's such a cool name. It's such it's so different, you know. Yeah. We go guns are blazing on Xbox. That's how ah. we do. Oh man. Uh and it's always exciting. Oh my gosh. Podcast by Xbox. I can't, we I might can't. start a we might start a drinking game. <laughs> oh my gosh uh download our family of shows and thank you so much for watching and until next week we love you hey let's pod and play yes oh yeah i forgot about pod and play watch that too axiom verge last the latest one yes on charter we'll, see you. Coming soon. we'll see you later everybody bye bye So the other job I was uh had the privilege of earning this week. Uh, my wife and her sister are starting their own YouTube page too. And they shot a bunch of videos and I'm trying to edit those too. <laughs> like I haven't even gotten close to editing them. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, that's that's, Carissa, that's gonna be my Carissa day tomorrow. Director. If like uh, if I could just like like the, I should have just spent the money that I spent on this laptop and then this computer that Lee built me. I should have just got a really, really, really nice iMac desktop and an iPad. Like that's what I should have gotten. That would have been the smart idea. And then bought and or got gotten Windows and went go through boot camp to stream stuff. But now I have like this nasty setup and it just takes it makes everything take so much longer and it just it's frustrating like I can't even take the time to post stuff in the Facebook group because I'm too busy editing or like <laughs> reworking like transferring stuff from one computer to the other so I can edit it it's just like uh, my brain is melting yeah, and I and I know I figured that that stuff happens, and that's why I try to like anytime I come up with anything that's uh, interesting, try to post stuff, and you know try to keep it you know content in there you know as as much as possible. But like I said, I'm working third shift, so sometimes it's hard for me too because no one's gonna. I mean, they'll eventually see it, but yeah, yeah, going up so late at night. <sighs> Ugh, okay. I think I'm ready now. Um, everybody else ready? I'm going to start yep. the recording. Uh... Just just to start it. Um, yay, podcast is scheduled. I started putting <laughs> I started putting the audio up 2 hours earlier than the video version. Than the video. I don't know. I used to put it up when we were doing it through SoundCloud. I used to put it up on Sunday nights. But I don't know. Yeah. Anyways. <sighs> so you enjoy NGP, uh, Corey? I, uh, I didn't listen to all of it. I listened to most of it. Okay. It, it was...
it was good. I don't like I I I listen to it in segments, and it's like really hard to like put the shows together after I segment them out. So like I I remember it, but it's all in like I don't know. I because I edit everything at like the same time. Oh, okay. Because like I did. NGP, POW Block, NGR, and World 1 1 all in one sitting. That one day. Okay. So, like, all the podcasts are, like, broken up. And, like, I remember conversations, like, but, like, it, sometimes it's hard because, like, you're on POW Block in Arsenal X, I'm on NGR, Moose is on NGR and NGP, and, like, all the conversations kind of blur together and like there was a lot of Vita talk this week on multiple shows. <laughs> I didn't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, oh, it was just, oh, I'm just tired. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Yeah. That's why. Uh, okay. Yes. The final CD is ripped, man. <laughs> I love 2007 technology. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> All right. Nothing like some uh, touched by an angel soundtrack for you. To... <laughs> uh, it's it was this. Just... Yeah. <laughs> my mom used to watch that show yeah, too. My mom's oh. obsessed with it. She got it on DVD and she watches it all the time. But she doesn't, like, really know how to change discs, so I think she's watched the same, like, six episodes for, like, three Best years. That's a mess. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I, yeah, my mom got me into a lot of good stuff that I still like today, but, yeah, there's a couple of um, outliers that I'm just like, nope. <laughs> yeah. Like, we used to watch, uh, what was it called? Um, crap. What was it called? The uh, one where the... Uh, early edition i think it was where the the guy got the newspaper for like he could see in the future he got the newspaper like a day oh, right or and something like, like he had to prevent the crimes that were going to happen in the yeah. next yeah. newspaper yeah that's, that. yeah well, it was like it was took place in chicago and he he owned that bar yeah i yeah. think so yeah. yeah it's early edition yeah yeah uh, that show was good to... Yeah, and then like my mom used to is the one actually who got me into. It. We used to watch uh, Next Generation together, Star Trek. Yeah, same here. <laughs> yeah, my mom used to watch it. Uh, I've never watched like, Star Trek. <laughs> no. Oh, it's good. My the mom whole... used to be like, "Eddie, <sighs> Generation is on." And <laughs> we would run to our separate rooms and watch it, and then come together <laughs> and talk about it. I am so like not up on like non-interactive pop culture it's terrible <laughs> yeah. no we went through we went through the whole list of tv shows and movies i didn't watch as a child and everybody at work even like the people that think they're better than everybody else like the chicks that think they're hotter than everybody else and like it just like you know those people they're like oh you didn't see this movie Ugh. i'm like sorry it's too busy playing Nintendo and my Game Boy. <laughs> you should yell at my grandma for giving me interactive media. Too busy just sitting here trying to finish Fall of the Foot Clan with all four turtles here. <laughs> Gosh, what a terrible Game Boy game. Which one? Yeah, <laughs> Ninja Turtles for Game Boy was awful. Oh, no. <laughs> I loved the first one. Oh, I loved it. It was st it's still terrible. <laughs> You're allowed to like bad <laughs> games. What that issue? That that really issue. Uh, like wild arms. <laughs> oh no, we're not. I'm not about to have that conversation with you. No, we already had that conversation like three times. Because <laughs> every time me, every time that game comes up, I don't, I don't, I, I get, no, I don't get enraged. I just get engaged in the conversation. Cause yeah, if you love wild arms, uh, just that's cool. I just think it's absolute garbage on how hard that it, that first intro. Like it's it literally is unfair. Better than I Final mean, Fantasy it's... VII. No, yeah. Final <laughs> Fantasy blows wild arms out the water. Final Fantasy VII sucks. No, it does not. It's the worst game of all time. No, it's not. <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't. 
I'd rather play <laughs> Barbie Horse Adventures. <laughs> yeah, it's funny cuz I'm I'm the same way with anime as I am with RPGs. I'm I'm super picky for whatever reason. Only certain things interest me and a lot of the times it's not always the most uh popular of the things, but mm-hmm. for whatever reason it just it gets my attention and that's all that matters isn't it (laughs) i think i have written a list of things that i guess i hate or just disapprove of and it's like star wars final fantasy 7 not final fantasy oh damn you (laughs) (laughs) finally admits it (laughs) like final fantasy 7 grand theft auto uh five and pretty much four and pretty much the GTCA series in general. Um, Star Wars. Uh, what else do I don't like? I know. The, well, Wild Arms I have a problem with. Beyond the Beyond is a terrible game. Uh, Avenger Leon. Neon Genesis Avenger Leon I think it's garbage. Uh, Everything is garbage. Speaking of garbage, you know what I almost bought today? Because I have so much Amazon credit. The uh, <laughs> the the twenty fifth anniversary of the nineteen ninety Ninja Turtles movie. They have they've released three of the four turtles on a one fourth scale figure. Wow! And they're one hundred twenty dollars a piece. No, <laughs> but they're awesome. I want one so bad. No, I just want the Leo and uh, Raph one. I love those original turtle movies. Oh my gosh, Ninja Turtles is the best movie of all time. See, so yeah, I was too busy avoiding bad movies like Ghostbusters and Back to the Future because I was watching Ninja See, Turtles. See, and I and I liked Ghost the Ghostbuster movies, but I'm just kidding. I've never seen not, I've never seen Ghostbusters or Fast to the, <laughs> Back to the well, Future. Well, and honestly, Wait, like what? I mean, you haven't seen Back to the Future. No. <laughs> Well, you can you can skip the third one. I mean, I liked it, but I know a lot of it just doesn't hit for most people. It's not memorable like the other two yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, like for me, like in the Ghostbusters, my my like basically comes from the the animated series. I just absolutely loved that show as a kid. Yeah, that was on uh, Fox. Fox Kids. Yeah, I have that. Of that whole collection, a <laughs> big box set of them, of all the episodes. Yeah, they just released them out. Did they do a DVD box set? I know we got them, yeah. out, like individually. We didn't get it. Yeah, box they set. they just recently started selling it in the stores. It originally was released through Time Magazine. <sighs> like that, that's the one that I got. Okay. Like, but they, I had just seen it the other day, and I think Walmart or something. But, wow. So Corey, uh. Yeah. I was uh, uh, watching the Xbox Dive uh, today. Yeah. Uh, James and uh, Chris. And uh, I ended up like, uh, you know, just type in saying, hey, guys. And another person jumped in and said, hey. Uh, and then I asked a question. And we started in having that conversation. And James and Chris are just like, well, we see there's another conversation going on. And I put, Hey guys, this is me, Eddie V. Uh, sorry about that. And James and Chris fell out laughing. They're just like, no wonder. <laughs> it's, so, it's just like only Eddie V would just jump in the chat and create a whole discussion <laughs> in the podcast itself. That's true. That is true. Because that is true. Because I put the question I put on. I'm like, what modern games of now would be like? today's Mega Man or like the 80s or 90s video games like what would be what modern games would be and uh, we ended up having a Bioware and Mass Effect talk and that turned into something and uh, yeah nice so nice yeah somewhere I have that Mega Man collection but I don't know my kids must have like put the disc somewhere or something I can't find the disc oh dang <laughs> yeah yeah I got it for PS4, but I need to finish. I think I did one, two, and three, but I need to do four, five, and six. I've never, or seven, I've never beaten those four games. I've seen they're coming out with the Volume 2 collection. 
Do yeah. It. Yeah. I hope it comes this way. Yeah, that I, isn't it supposed to? Technically, uh, I a, thought they. I th well, Capcom has a bunch of unannounced projects for Switch, and like the first ones they announced was the Resident Evil Revelations. Woo, the ones we don't want. Um, but yeah. See, and I'm the outlier with that too. I'd I'd rather have that over like four or five, and like all the ones where it's just crazy people <laughs> and not yeah. zombies. I, don't I mean, know. I would just... I would rather have like remake and zero personally yeah yeah but. yeah i love i love zero i i had it for what was it gamecube or something yeah was it didn't it come out for gamecube yeah yeah and then i just i never got a chance to finish it and but now i i have the remastered collection the uh, zero and and one on the xbox so i've been playing it i should play that it picked that up again yeah, that remake yes. is good, but I never played any Resident Evil past <laughs> one. I played zero. I, actually... I played zero and one, and that was it. Oh, two is my favorite. Um, I, I'm gonna have to go with four. I've played. Yeah. It's, uh, let's see. Oh, I played Cause... Revelations also on Wii when it came to Wii U. I played Revelations, and I actually, oh, okay. I actually liked it a lot. But I need to uh, finish uh, that on. Let's see. I played Resident Evil because that was my first M-rated. No, yeah, that was. I think that was my first M-rated game that I bought with my own money at my gun rewards. I did that on PlayStation One. Uh, I did Resident Evil Two on N64, Resident Evil Three on Dreamcast, Resident Evil Four on GameCube, Five on PS3, and I've never played Six, and I got Seven for Xbox One. That's funny. I did three on Dreamcast too. I think that was like one yes! of the first, one of the first games I got for it or something. I forget. Yeah. Now I, I just I, remember playing a lot of Crazy Taxi uh, on there. Yeah. I remember. I remember when I was when I bought my Dreamcast. I got Sonic Adventure, one and two, and then I got Crazy Taxi, NBA Two K Two, and then, like, I went to there's this uh, local grocery store called Marks in this area and they had like clearance dreamcast games because it was right after dream or sega announced that they were pulling the plug on the dreamcast and they had a bunch of clearance dreamcast games and i ended up getting tony hawk 2 tomb raider the which one was on dreamcast last revelation i think and uh blue stinger and ill bleed Ugh. oh my gosh those games are awesomely bad <laughs> was Ill Bleed the one with Jessifer? Uh, Ill Bleed was, I forget, the main girl had like purple hair and a pink shirt and a white skirt. That might and be he ran, and like, you could go back and complete each challenge as any of the other characters. Okay. Because uh, I know, I think that one said you were S with fear. You like, they used to like the actual S word with fear. I'm like, this is an ad. I still have hit? it somewhere. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I was, I got the, uh, I didn't get the NBA, but I got the NFL 2K. I think for uh, for Dreamcast, because yeah. see, I never liked Madden, I, and I still to this day I don't care for it. I I liked the NFL 2K better. Yeah, I was <laughs> bummed when they when they got the uh, you know basically told that they weren't gonna be able to do it anymore because yeah. Uh, man got the rights. Yeah, Sega put out that uh, the last one that they had put out. It was like only twenty dollars, and it so way more than Madden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was so much better, in my opinion. Oh yeah. I just liked I liked their mechanics way better. Did you get? Did you end up getting? Remember when they tried to reboot their football series on Xbox 360 and PS3, the All Pro Football, with like the legend players? Did you play that? at all i don't think i did oh my gosh that game was awesome and like was it? it was a little slow but you could turn the game speed there was like slow medium and fast and if you turn it up to fast it played just like nfl 2k on dreamcast to the point where okay. it was like i ugh, oh my gosh it was awesome and they never made a sequel but it was awesome huh. but in, 
but there's no franchise mode, but you could play a season. And, like, the idea was, like, they took away, like, all the ratings that, you know, like, the 9,000 ratings each player has on Madden. And they okay. gave everybody, like, uh, gold, silver, bronze, or platinum medals in each category. And, like, you picked, uh, you picked, like, four or five legends for each side of the ball. And then mm-hmm. your, the rest of your team was filled with like generic players. And like, you know, it made, it made the teams more fair, I guess. Like every time you started a season, there was a fantasy draft. And so like you played through your season and it was just, it was awesome. And you could like create up to like a hundred players that you could put on your team. Nice. Oh, it was awesome. It was so Yeah, cool. that, that sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> And like they didn't make a sequel because it didn't sell because it wasn't real NFL. But like I had like Jerry Rice, I had like John Elway thrown to Jerry Rice and like <laughs> Deion Sanders returning kicks, and it was awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. When what was it called? And it was on 360. You said. Yeah, it was called All Pro Football 2K8. I want to say 2K7 or 2K8. It had Jerry Rice and just John look Owen into it on the on the look end. into maybe getting it. I don't care. I'll play an older game. Yeah. Versus what's out now. I, I mean, plus <laughs> it's plus it's like it's nice because it's uh, you know it's legend, so like it doesn't really age. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're old players anyway, so. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh. and the, and it's the same thing too with like and and I mean. I don't know. I I loved the original, the old school wrestling games, but now they just there's just so much going on that it's it just kind of takes away the fun of it. Yeah, to a everything. Extent. There's no good arcade sports games anymore. Yeah, which is like I wanted to like NBA Playgrounds when I got it on Switch, but it was like I don't know. It wasn't the same as I wanted to be NBA Jam, and it wasn't. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. But. Yeah. I mean, it's close. It's close, but yeah, at the same time, it's so close yet so far. Yeah, jerks. I still, I still enjoy it and play it just because you know. Until we, if we do ever get an NBA Jam for it, which I doubt we will. Yeah. But... Well, what do you say we start this this episode? I guess we could. Yes, because we literally good. just we literally just did a community <laughs> podcast. I know we did. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. All right. Let me put my hosting eyes on. Uh, uh, I mean, this is this is how every episode goes before the episode, though. We just sit here and talk about stuff. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> man, this is going in the episode, though. This will go. This will be like the pre-roll. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes, love it. Oh man, I put some of that in NGP this week. I think. You guys were talking about something. I forget. Uh, I don't know. Anyways. All right. Bless you. Uh, look, uh, like I was telling you, like last week uh, when me and Jesse was talking, we literally could have recorded a podcast. <laughs> Time to fall too, which has gone to Mame. <laughs> yeah. Well, we started at like, what, 11, 1130, and we talked to like one what? something in the morning. Yeah. yeah. You guys should yeah. do it. Yeah. You guys should do a Let's Pod and play for Titanfall. That would be fun. Yeah. I own it. I need to re-download it. I own it, though, on Xbox. I got a, I had sold my copy of it just because it, it's on the... Uh, oh, it's on Access yeah. now, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, or no, uh, I, I'm thinking of Titanfall 1. I sold that one because it, it was on Access, and uh, I, I got the digital... I buy most of my Xbox games digital because I don't. I usually, you know, I'm picky about what I buy because I don't have a lot of money to to spend oh, on it. Shit. So I, I basically know whatever I'm getting, I'm keeping. So do might as like, well just get it digital. Right? Do uh, do you have a cheap ass gamer on Twitter? Um no. You oh should, yeah. Uh, you should follow them. They have. Yeah, follow them. There's so many good deals, and like okay. they'll tell you when like things are in stock or like. When like the amiibo craze was going on for a while, they would say, "Hey, this place has them in stock." Or and you, and since you already know me at Toys, 
hey, I can tell you what's going on sale, and I can tell you what store has what whatever meatball that you're looking for. So I can hit you up and be like, hey, if you got the cash and you need to go get it, here's the nearest toys. That's right. that's my. You guys, can, you go get it. Ed, yeah, I need I, blue Joy Cons. Was... <laughs> uh, can we get some Joy Cons in our store in the first place? We don't have none. Man. We don't have no joy cons and we just ran out of the pro controllers. So we like we don't have nothing. Heck, even the uh the headset is selling out. I'm like, the heck? Yeah, you know, honestly, it, I think I think in a way that, that that almost could be not I mean, people are still gonna wanna get the switch, don't get me wrong. But at the same time I think it's it's kind of a bummer and can hurt hurt their sales when you go into a like almost any store and you look in the switch section and there is nothing there is nothing to look at it's like you know like if you have stuff there you know people might be a little bit more interested but there is nothing at the stores by us wow there there's no amiibos or any there's just nothing well <laughs> Well, shoot, like always, hit me up, dude, and be like, we don't have this amiibo, and I kind of really want it. Dude, hit me up. If I got that amiibo, I'll just straight, I'll just straight get it and mail it to you. I got your back. All right, yeah, because there. Yeah, there's Ed, a, there's a Ed will get you whatever you need. He got me that NES mini. Like, oh, Ed, <laughs> I can't believe you did that. Yes, because see, no, because see, this is what happened with the NES mini. I brought it just so I could hold on to it, and. I was going to sell it to one friend, but, you know, he never came through. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to give this to Corey for his birthday. He, Corey told me no. So because I was like, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get you something for your birthday. He told me no. So I, uh, I, we, we talking in December. I'm like, okay, I'm sending to this to him for Christmas. I'm not sending this to anybody else. He, I'm like, he, he had his heart on this. So I'm definitely going to sell it to him on Christmas. So. I actually, I was just like, I need to speak to your wife. And he was just like, why? I was just like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't contain you too much, but I just need to speak to her. So I, I ended up, you know, messaging his wife. And uh, we're talking, and we're talking. And I asked her, hey, uh, have you been looking for uh, an ES Mini for Corey? And she's just like, yeah. I, and I said, well, you can stop looking. I have one, and I'm going to ship it to him for, ship it to you guys for free. When you get it, tell them it's for it's from you, and wish them Merry Christmas and stuff. And she's just like, no, I can't do that. I'm just like, you can. I'm gonna ship it to him. You don't. It don't. You don't have to pay me anything. This is for him. I'm like, boss man has been, like, he's. I'm like, he's been through ups and downs and everything, and he literally deserves something like this. So, uh, and so I and so Corey's just like, what you talking to my wife for? I'm just like, I just needed, just, I just needed your size for a t-shirt. That's all. I'm like, it's some other things. And so Corey's just like, okay. And I and Corey didn't know. He literally didn't know. So it came to the week. Uh, I, it, uh, I had finally got a chance to get off of work and actually send the prison off because I was doing, I was just at work at most of the whole day. And so I got to the mail, uh, the post office. I did it express. I'd be like, look, I'll pay extra money. I need this to be done. They were just like, it'll be there by Saturday. I'm like, okay, cool, good. <laughs> so it gets there that Saturday morning. And uh, son, Corey is listening to this for the first time. Son is just like, the package, the package came in. I was like, yes. I'm like, success. Don't let success. him see it. <laughs> I was like, don't let him, <laughs> don't let him see it. Wrap it up and make sure that you know. Tell them that it's from you and from the NGR crew, and everything. Because I was, I was just like, this is gonna be for everybody, uh, even though everybody didn't know. And so, it gets just like I guess they was opening presents Saturday night. Now that part I didn't know they was opening presents on Saturday night. So, Corey, Asana's opening her gifts. Corey is opening up their gifts, and I guess Asana gave it to, uh, gave this box to Corey. And Corey opens it up, and well, he should have seen that it was a green shirt wrap, wrapping something up, and Corey didn't know what it was. So, uh, Corey, I guess you could take it from here because I want to know what happened. Like, well, how... laying on, laying on top, like someone's like, "This box came for you." I, she's like, "It's from Edward." I'm like. Um, okay. I told him not to get any, anything and I was all prepared to be really mad at you. Um, 
and then like on top it was like that you got me that gears of war hat uh yes and then the call of duty t-shirt and then wrapped in the call of duty t-shirt was the nes classic and i was like i didn't even know what to say i was like i i can't be mad but i am mad because i told you not to get anything but i really wanted this so i can't be that mad and then i was like I my face was like stuck because I didn't know how to react because <laughs> I wanted it so bad. It was just like staring in this box, and my wife's like, "Yeah, I was really disappointed because Ed found one and I didn't." <laughs> I was like, "She was like, but I got you the Zelda amiibo," <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "I know, I don't know what how to react right now. There's so many emotions that, going on in my and I, in my head and right I now." Told- Sana to tell you that it was from her and the NGR crew. Oh. So it felt like that she got it for you. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, it was it was exciting. And like I don't I don't really like celebrating my birthday. Uh so like anytime people get me stuff I like feel really bad for a long time. It doesn't matter. And, and I know people are supposed to get presents on their birthday. It's just this weird mind thing where like if somebody gets me something I feel really bad and feel like I owe them like my life, even if it's like I don't know a <laughs> scratch off ticket from the gas station. Like, dang, <laughs> I feel like I owe somebody my life every time they give me something, and it's just like I I don't like feeling like that, even though like I I'm like okay, birthdays you're supposed to give people stuff, and like I enjoy giving people things, but like I don't like it when people get me things. It's just it's just this really weird overwhelming sense of guilt that comes over my body <laughs> it's just, it's like yeah. i hate it so yeah but. i tried i think it was two years ago i tried something like that with my wife's family i'm like okay if you you know i don't i, I enjoy getting everyone stuff but you don't really have to get me anything <clears throat> if you really want to spend some money you know i'm like just you know donate donate it to a charity or something and do that or something like that and they didn't. They didn't like that too, too much. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> They're wow. like, no, we we gotta get stuff for you know. I'm just like, uh, all right. Yeah. Because was... uh, you know we were doing that thing where you spend like a couple of bucks, you know, on each person. Yeah. And it's like, I'd rather instead of you like spending money on something that's cheaper, you know, that might not last very long because nowadays if you don't spend any money, it's like things don't really last very long. I'd rather that just go to someone, you know, someone else that needs it or something <laughs> instead of just buying some something that's going to possibly break like within a week or something anyway. So, but they're just like, ah, we, we want to keep doing, you know, keep doing this. I'm just like, okay, I guess. I'm not going to fight about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whoa! But. I'm sorry. I was looking on Amazon at that Ninja Turtle statue that I've been keeping my eye on for such such a long time. And, like, they hadn't released the Michelangelo one. Michelangelo's one's up on pre-order on Amazon. Nice. Sorry. I got, yes. I got really excited. I love these yeah, things, I, man. I love Michelangelo and uh, Leonardo are my favorite. Donatello right here all day. Yeah. In the games, yeah, Donatello has the longest weapon. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, but man, these things are so cool. I want all of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be awesome. I had to I had to stop collecting stuff like that cuz I got I got a bunch of collective stuff, you know, all over in here in my game room, but I like my friends were doing the whole hero clicks thing and I wasted a bunch of money on all that stuff. And it's just like, and this, like half of them are like broken now because of, you know, when we were moving from one house to the other or whatever, it got damaged and just like, man, I wasted all this money on this stuff and we only played it like maybe a handful of times anyway. Such a, <laughs> I just got to stop myself from doing that stuff. Cause it can, you can get, uh, a lot of money wasted really quick. Yeah. On some of that stuff. I stopped collecting. Well, I shouldn't say I stopped collecting, but like the, I'm very specific about the things that I collect now. And like, yeah, like I collected, I have all the Disney infinity figures, but like when it comes to like Amiibo, I really just pick the certain ones that I want. And like, 
I will get that because if you get sucked into like all of them, you're you're screwed. Uh, but like this, this movie changed my life. Like this movie, <laughs> like changed everything about everything for me. <laughs> so like, I'm really like I I really want these and like. I I ha- I've been collecting Ninja Turtles since I was like born. Uh but yeah. like these this movie this set in particular, like this movie in particular was like oh, oh. Yeah, it it yeah. was an awesome movie. Oh, man. And like the special edition on Blu ray came in a pizza box. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, and I have it sitting down there somewhere. Where my movies are. We had the, uh, we saw the, uh, uh, the cartoon in the Ninja Turtle van. Yeah, I have that the whole too. collection. I have it. It's at my parents' house, but I have that too. But nice. like, I haven't, I haven't bought anything Ninja Turtles since like the, what the last set of Ninja Turtles I bought was when W. It was on WB. That second cartoon that came out after the original. Uh uh-huh. That I think it was on WB Kids or whatever. Uh, and I bought the four turtles and uh, Casey Jones were the only pi- figures I bought from that original set. And I haven't bought any Ninja Turtle figures since because, like, that cartoon wasn't very good. And supposedly the Nickelodeon show that's on that was on was really good. But now they're doing a second show, a second Ninja Turtle show. Uh, and, like, the toys from that look really cool. But, like... When the movies came out, I didn't buy anything from the new movies or anything. And, like, after Turtles in Time came out, that was, like, that movie was, oh, it was awful. But, like, I have... Yeah, I'm with you on that one. And so, like, I've been very, (laughs) very particular on, like, the Ninja Turtle collectibles that I buy now. But, like, these, these, I would trade my, my Xbox One and PS4 for the set of these. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, and it's close. Ugh. Yeah, the the Nickelodeon uh, Turtles show isn't isn't that bad. I watch it. I think I got like the the first and the second collection volume mm-hmm. because my my son, you know, I we got him like all the figures for those, you know, the all four turtles, and then I think one, uh, maybe the Shredder or something for those Nickelodeon ones and yeah it's not it's not that bad mm-hmm. it's a, it's I guess supposedly I don't know a lot about the the comic books but it's supposed to follow the comics I guess a lot more than the, the original 80s ones did mm-hmm. oh yeah the 80s ones so, took a lot of liberty yeah they did not yeah no yeah so yeah I for, I mean, I've what I've watched, I I like it a lot actually. I I kind of was, you know, when you like something when you're younger and you see something, they redo it, and you're just like, oh, I'm not gonna like this. But it actually wasn't that bad. The same with uh, Thundercats. I actually I loved Thundercats the original, but I but I and I didn't think I was gonna like the newer version, and I actually liked it a lot. So yeah, we actually got uh, Mara and. Uh... Lionel uh, figures in like the big one, big collector yeah. ones. I nice. loved Mumra. <laughs> nice. He was actually my favorite character of the show. Dang, <laughs> <laughs> the bad guy. <laughs> uh, snarf, snarf. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm sending you the pictures in the Facebook chat because these things are amazing. Oh, I'm sending you the Leonardo one and the Michelangelo one. These are the these are the figures. These aren't like costumes from the sh- from the movie or anything. These are the figures. Ugh. 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 Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, those are awesome looking. Ugh. Yeah, because those are that's still my favorite. Uh, my favorite turtle, you know, the outfit, the whole entire, you know, the the body structure, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like. Although they, 
I like the idea of the new turtles. Like, I like the idea that they were like, they had things on their shells and stuff that made them unique. Yeah, but they were just way too big and way too tanky. Yeah, and it's like they're nin- yeah, that's how they're I ninjas. felt too. They're they're ninjas. <laughs> like, yeah. why are they humongous? Why are they ten feet tall? Why is Michelangelo <laughs> an idiot? I mean, he's always an idiot, but like, he's like borderline needs to wear a helmet when he goes outside. Like, uh, anyways, all right, let's. Yeah, get... all right. Uh, <laughs> uh. I was just gonna say, have you seen that awful, awful turtle show where they got the the girl turtle? Yeah, I've the heard next about the it. next mutation. I have a v- yes. I have a Venus figure. I think it's a Hulu. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, on Netflix it was... too. Yeah, it yeah, was... that's where I watched it. I just there was a there was a was crossover like... episode with the Power Rangers. Yeah, Ugh. that's right. There was. Yeah, yeah, I just it was like close to those the movies the movie that you like, but it was still it was just too hokey for me. It was I just... like it was like a really bad like TV show that was going for like parody status, but yeah, was also trying to be serious. And yeah, have you ever seen just... turtle boobs, Edward? No. <laughs> it's... Mm. Mm. I, yeah. I don't care for boobs. You know me. I know. It's okay. <sighs> and then why do you make her color almost like so close to the, you know, like the, I know. there's no distinction why in the were, color. Why like... wasn't she pink? She's a yeah, girl. Make her right. pink. You don't need to be blue. We already have a blue turtle. All right. (laughs) Anyways, before I get frustrated about the next mutation, I'm all fired up. All right. (laughs) You fired up and then going to hit the bed. Oh, I know. I'm going to crash. I'm going to crash. Like, as soon as I leave this show, I'm going to (sighs) crash. Okay, here we go.